This is something that came up this year, probably in full blast. It's about the transgender, let's not say problem, but when you see a corpse, then probably you don't know which gender that is. Right. We saw gender neutral restrooms here. Mm -hmm. That was also something that was new. Yeah. But why is that a problem in forensics? Usually I go there, I take a DNA sample, then I know if this is male or female. Right. So what's the problem? <laughs> so, so one of the problems with DNA specifically is that we assume that everyone has either an XX or an XY chromosome, which is not always the case. There are intersex people, there are more than I think there's definitely more than a dozen, potentially more than 20, like different um, chromosomal variations. And so that's one thing to think about. But other thing is just that, on, you know, on human remains, we can't always tell someone's gender. Not everyone has gender confirmation surgery, um, but by going by only genitalia, we risk misgendering them, not identifying individuals because we're not using their correct name, their correct pronouns. So for example, somebody could look for, let's say, male 40 years old, but no, no male 40 years old is missing because, exactly, because you're, you're, they're transgender and they go by a different name and use different clothing and things like that. And so just being making sure that we're being more inclusionary rather than exclusionary in our methods and you know just lessening the harm that we do to the population. And, it, and also, even if you're not interested in the whole um, problem, let's say on a, on a social level, you must be because we are working. We are a forensic society exactly. and a criminalistic society. Exactly, we are forensic scientists, and we work for the decedents that we analyze and that we try to identify or offer information on. And so, we owe this to this population to make sure that we are giving them our best science that we can. So, what are these? I'm reading about these uh, databases that you're referring to. Yes. So how, how, what, what, which information is in, the, in those databases? Yep, so Transgender Day of Remembrance works with also Transgender Europe and a few other collective um, community-led databases. And so what they do is they look online, they look for social media posts, petitions, uh, police reports, missing persons reports, and they basically crowdsource all of this information to put it into a database. And so it's often um, activists, members from the communities, academics, forensic scientists. It's kind of very inclusionary in the way that this database is built because everyone is looking for this information and it doesn't risk the exclusion of someone being misgendered in like a government database or things like that because there is no standardized database currently for us to track these students. So is, is this a database for dead persons or for live yes. persons? So it's only for deceased individuals and it's only for deceased individuals that died by um, like unnatural causes. So you can see here like interpersonal violence is the most common cause of death for these decedents. And this word cloud shows some of the most um, prominent words used throughout the entire database. So a lot of individuals are, are shot or are stabbed or are beaten. Unfortunately, they're really brutal hate crimes that happen to a lot of these individuals that end up in medical examiners and coroner's offices. Yes, yes, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, mis nobody understands, or at least I don't understand the hate that uh, especially transgender yeah. persons um, have to uh, suffer from. Yeah, it's, it's... And, and it's worldwide and, and it's, it's horrible. It's really, really heinous um, hatred that the community faces. So how did you stumble across that topic? Were you, were you interested in that for, for a longer time or was yeah. it just a project that was assigned to you? No, no, not at all. So I, while I was doing my master's, I started to notice kind of some of the discrepancies in sex estimation, even just in my own analyses and realizing that, oh, I'm, I'm not quite sure and I'm not quite sure if I want to put this individual into a box without being 100%. And then I kind of also went on my own gender journey and I am a non-binary forensic anthropologist. And so kind of connecting my science and my community led me led me to here. And then I found out about the, the database and it's open source. And I had an undergrad who wanted to help with the project. And so, so now here we are. And this funnels into my dissertation as well. Uh, uh, which type of ident identification did you do when you found out that the, it was difficult to assign a gender? Are you a forensic pathologist or a DNA I'm person? An or the, so you, you so I'm an anthropologist, so I look at the bones specifically. And so our methods typically have male, female, or ambiguous. And I often found that I was, I was nervous about putting them in a male or female category if it wasn't like overwhelmingly expressive of the traits that we use to identify that. Um, and then as I started putting people in the ambiguous category, I felt, well, this is kind of dehumanizing to them, right? Because now 
that's one less thing that we know about them and we're just putting them in a random category. Yeah. And ambiguous categories in anthro like literature and in bio art often get excluded from samples. So if we have a sample that's 50% ambiguous and someone wants to do a sex study, they might just like get rid of the ambiguous skulls completely, right? So it's a big ongoing issue throughout all of forensics and in anthro specifically. Yeah. As a biologist, I would just throw out gender completely out of the forensic context. What, what, as an anthropologist, what do you think about that? Just let's, I mean, now, of course, we need to, you know, focus on that so people yes. realize that there are different genders. But do you think, like, that at least would be my solution? It would be a possible solution to just throw out that category of gender? Or? Yeah, I think the problem with that is that, like we said, that runs into issues where maybe they didn't identify as a male but we say we have a missing male decedent and now no one identifies them because they don't consider them a male no but right? what, what if you don't have gender at all anymore you just say it's a missing person this and that features and there yeah. we go i mean that, that would be my solution not not talk about gender at all right oh. i think um i don't know as anthros one thing that we've taken to doing is just connecting um, biology and culture so that we take more of a biocultural approach to our analysis so that we can consider what cultural influences may have been at play for gender but I do see what you're saying I think it would be I think it would be not well received <laughs> to uh, cut it out completely right okay, I but I do also just think that like gender is important and it is part of someone's lived identity and so I don't want to erase that from them after death I and see. so I think that, you know, finding better ways to be more inclusive and to incorporate that into our analyses really does well, like on behalf of the decedents. I see. So another aspect of inclusion to, yes. to respect that the person during their lifetime, yes. that this was part of their identity. Yeah, absolutely. We, we both, did you also have to celebrate diversity yes. uh, ribbon? Um, what, what? That's the final question, I promise. <laughs> what, what, how did that come up at the conference? You know, I think um, the past few years, there's been a lot of talk about diversity in different realms, right? There's diversity in terms of including more women, more people of color, more BIPOC people, and also gender. And so I think that this is kind of just the next topic that people are starting to say, okay, we, we're working on inclusivity, now let's talk about the next thing, right? So I think that, you know, it, it's just important, and I think that being able to, to bring it all together is, is great. The truth is that uh, the society was sometimes a little bit conservative before, so we are trying to break ground a little bit. She doesn't want to say it, but I'm <laughs> saying you. it. I'm so a I'm saying it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and your time. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>